Hello everybody and welcome back to the refurbishment of this DR1 Fokker triplane. Um, I'm now sitting between the Christmas and the New Year period and there's an opportunity to get a little bit of work done on this to push things on. Um, before I discuss what I'm going to do today, a word about the engine choices. I've now got a nice uh, problem in that I have two running engines both of which I think will be more than capable of doing the job needed on this project. One was the original choice, which is this Zenua 38cc Magneto engine. And you can see I've already got a back plate mounted for that. And the other option, if I just swivel around a little so you can see it, is this engine, which is a CRRC engine which um, I was unable to start at first but it's now running very very sweet and that uses an electronic ignition system it's a quite a bit lighter than the Zenua so that gives a nice option if I find that the plane is becoming way too uh, nose heavy which I was concerned about perhaps unjustifiably so uh, earlier on but that's a nice problem to have Something I've managed to do um, is get the teal painted up and yesterday I installed, if I can tip this so you can see, I, I managed to install the tubes that the pull-pull system will run through. And I'm going to use a pull-pull system for both the elevator and for the rudder. So... In this top tube, the wire will exit, run through the horizontal stabiliser and come to the upper horn. This lower exit point comes to this lower horn and this one it will go to the rudder horn when that's installed. And what I'm going to do today is to make the servo mounting plate and I'll show you how that's going to help me with the CG in a second. I'll just pause it and move these out of the way and we'll have a closer look. The cranks which will operate the pull-pull system are going to be mounted here. And then the servo, the, the servos that operate the elevator and the rudder will be mounted on a tray which could be located anywhere in this space. I'm going to actually make a railing on both sides that this a tray can slide back and forth on. And I'll use the weight of that tray, um, two servos, perhaps a third servo for the throttle. And perhaps even position for um, a, a re receiver battery. And I'll use that to slide back and forward to help in getting the CG correct. So I'm going to make that tree up and I'm going to make the cranks up to operate the pull-pull system. And then once that's done, I can actually press on and get this fuselage covered. Let's get started then. So this is how it's going to work. This is the fuselage size and I'm drawing it from above, plan view. First tiller, second tiller. Fulcrum point. These push rods will be determined, the location of them will be determined by the tray being moved back and forth to mount the servos. Perhaps another servo there going to the throttle, I don't know. And then the pull pull or continual loop or closed loop and for the elevator because I have uh, two separate elevators it'll have to be done like this so these two will both go to let's just call this one the upper surface and these two will go to the lower surface and that will enable uh, the system to work and they'll run through the tubes that I've just described that run through the fuselage side. This tray 
its ultimate position will be determined uh, to try and make the most of this weight and use it to achieve a good CG without adding lead from the church roof, shall we say. Right, let's press on, press on and make these. This is what I'm going to use to make the cranks. It's printed circuit board um, for obviously making up electronic circuits. Um, I used to tinker about making little little um, electric, electronic panels for the model boats that I worked on. Um, things like horns and flashing lights and uh, steam generator sounds. Um, I didn't know a great deal about the electronics, but I was able to follow instructions in Silver, so I um, actually got, got into to the level of actually etching out my own um, circuit boards. So this is really useful because it'll take solder, obviously. And what I'm going to do is make a pair of cranks, one for the rudder. Let's do that one first because that's quite straightforward. Um, I've got a scraper here so I can cut into the surface. That's the length width I'm going to make it. No special reason. And I've just double checked and the horns are actually two centimetres from the um, hinge line. So if I mark the two here and I mark here and I've left a little bit of space on the end, that's going to signify the fulcrum point for the tiller. And that's the, the point at which I need to drill a hole to take the clevis. And the clevises will be at this end and adjustable. And then they can be locked off with a lock nut. And they're, they're going to be accessible because the middle wing uh, is obviously removable. And they're going to be easy to get to. The other one obviously needs to be two centimetres from the side. Mark that on. And when it comes to drilling these out, I'll make sure that they're a neat um, fit for the clevis. And although with a continual loop or a pull-pull system, it's not as critical. Now, just a word about people getting really uptight. Now, I was one of them about how the continual loop system works. Uh, people get very twitchy about, oh, it seems slack or I can't get the tension right. And it's quite logical when you think about it. As long as the fulcrum point is the same on the tiller as on the control surface, it's easy to get the tension. But even if they're not, it's not a big deal because the side that pulls, the other side often goes slack. It's because of the radius of the turn. That doesn't matter because air pressure will keep the control surface in the position you want. It isn't going to flop onto the slack side because the wind's going to be blowing on the other side. Let's just sketch that so it makes sense. If we took the rudder, for example, I'm going to draw this from above. This is the rudder and you have the control horn sticking out here operating like that and let's say you moved it in that direction what people experience is often this horn is this side is tight the line's tight and this one goes slack and they get really concerned about that saying oh there's a lot of flop in it well actually there isn't because if there's tension on this side the air is pushing on that side because the aircraft's going forward unless you're doing some fancy 3D flying and it isn't going to go anywhere. So you, you don't need to get too uptight about it. That being said, if I keep it like this, I, I'm, I'm certain that I can get them set up uh, correctly. And then I think I'll have a tiller position here, another hole drilled, that the push rod can go to the servo. So I simply need to cut that shape out, 
cut that shape out and that will be the tiller arm for the rudder. Let's get it done. Yeah, I'll cut it out. Here we are back again. Um, I've cut out the tiller, as you can see there. Um, the three holes, two, the two outer holes, take the clevis that go to the pull-pull system. The inner one, this one here, will go to the push rod and the servo. And I've made a little boss here, hope you can see that, that I'm about to solder to this tiller and then the bolt can go through and a washer can hold it in position and we'll have a nice smooth action, hopefully. So let's solder this on. I'm gonna apply some flux. Flux is the key to any successful soldering. This particular flux, flux I used on the undercarriage and without it, I would have been on all day trying to get a decent joint. Uh, I was put onto it, advised what to get from a fellow club member, Dave Slasser. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, I've said it before, the big advantage of being a member of a club is there's always somebody there to help you out. I heard a lovely saying the other day and I, I think it's great. If you're the most intelligent person in the room, find another room. And I love pe picking people's brains to find out how to do things. And Dave helped me out with this. So, flux is applied. Let's apply some heat to the joint between the two. Wouldn't go amiss if that was cleaned a little bit, the soldering iron. That's better. Apply heat to both of them. And then hopefully it will flow. And I want to fill it all the way around. So it's attached all the way around the bus. There we go. Let that cool down. I'll clean it with um, some scouring powder and an old toothbrush because the flux will keep on eating away at the metal finish if you don't do that. And then, there we go. I'll see if you can see that. Nice shiny silver joint. And it's come through to the other side as well. So I know that that's solid. And there's my pivot. Once I put a washer between the top of the head. And that's got a washer underneath to rotate on. There's the tiller on made. I'll do the other one and then we'll actually install them into the model. Well, it doesn't take long for this table to resemble a war zone, does it? Right, here we go. Um, these are the tillers that I've made for the closed loop or pull-pull system. The inner hole will take um, a push rod which will go to a servo and the outer holes will take the wire that will go to the control surface. And this is where I intend locating them. Might have to manoeuvre around a little here. So they will go in there. They're mounted on two hardwood blocks. At the moment, I have some screws to hold them in place. Eventually, they'll be screwed and epoxied but to aid putting the loops through and setting up the clevises, I'll keep this loose, work on it sort of here or even out of the um, fuselage, put it into position, then pull the cables through at the control surface end and then everything can be nipped up and set up at that end rather than this end. This end will be set 
with the clevises and the locking nuts. The other end is where they'll actually be set up into neutral position and there we have it. That's that part of the process done. I think actually I'll cut this a little bit short and I'll not actually do the servo train now. Uh, I'll make up a separate video on its own right. And, but that will be a floating one that I can move back and forwards, um, as I said at the beginning, to help determine the correct CG. We might as well take advantage of that, the weight of the servos uh, and do that. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, why don't you? Costs nothing. It'll be the cheapest uh, post-Christmas gift that you have. And you'll be able to see how things go on the remainder of this build. Bye for now.